August 14th is a special date, a date to remember and a date to remind ourselves and others about the ultimate sacrifice that some people take in the name of Christian faith embodied in the Polish spirit. John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. To love and to the point of victimhood is how Maximilian Kolbe put it. Very few people could live this kind of life, but one man did. That man was Polish martyr and Saint Maximilian Kolbe, a truly incredible, intelligent, courageous individual who did suffer unto the point of victimhood. Kolbe was beautified as confessor of the faith in 1971. He was canonized by Pope John Paul II, who himself lived through the German occupation of Poland in 1981 by the tolling of the bells of St. Peter's Basilica and exaltation of the martyr of Auschwitz, met by thunderous applause of thousands in attendance including some of the surviving prisoners of the Nazi German concentration camp, Auschwitz, whose minds and hearts were forever branded with the memory of his saintly and heroic self-donation. Their former cellmate had now been raised to the altars of the church. Once again, Christ reigns. Once again, the enemy has been defeated. Baptized as Raymond Kolbe, our saint was a normal child, yet there is one stunning exception. One night in Kolbe's childhood, our Lady appeared to him in a dream, holding a white crown and a red crown. He later related, she asked if I was willing to accept either of these crowns. The white one meant that I should persevere in purity and the red one that I should become a martyr. I said that I would accept them both. So yes, Saint Maximilian had a normal childhood, but with that one tremendous difference that was to define the course of his life. As a student, the young Raymond excelled in what we now call the STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, and math. He also had a passionate interest in all things military. A childhood dream of the priesthood was almost lost for this ardent patriot and soldier's heart as he hoped for a military career defending his beloved Poland. Complications caused him to abandon these plans and he entered the Franciscan Noviate late in 1910 and was ordained in 1918. By the time he was in his early 30s, Kolbe founded a religious house near Warsaw, the city of the Immaculate, from which to expand his evangelization efforts. Starting with a handful of friars, within a decade it grew to a house nearly a thousand. That city still exists. He and a handful of his brothers then traveled to Japan, where they opened another house in Nagasaki. Kolbe was a man of his times and thoroughly modern in his evangelization. The friars made use of the most modern printing technologies and distribution strategies for their materials, their arsenal in the militia spiritual war. They even started a radio station. Kolbe even had plans for a movie studio. At the start of the Second World War, Kolbe was residing in the friary he set up, the city of the Immaculate. By that time, it had expanded from 18 friars to 650 friars, making it the largest Catholic house in Europe. When Poland was overran by the Nazi forces in 1939, he was arrested under general suspicion on September 13th, but released after three months. He could have actually signed the Deutsche Volkslist, which would have given him the rights similar to those of German civilians in exchange for recognizing his ethnic German ancestry, but he refused. When first arrested, he said, Courage, my sons, don't you see that we are leaving on a mission? They pay our fare and bargain. What a piece of good luck. The thing to do now is to pray well in order to win as many souls as possible. Let us then tell the Blessed Virgin that we are content and she can do with us anything she pleases. On being released, many Polish refugees and Jews sought sanctuary in Kolbe's monastery. Kolbe and the community helped to hide and feed and clothe 3,000 Polish refugees, of which approximately 2,000 were Jews. On February 17, 1941, he was arrested by the Gestapo for hiding Jewish people. After a brief internment at the notorious Polish prison, the Paviak, he was sent to Auschwitz concentration camp and branded prisoner 16670. Kolbe was sent to the work camp. This involved carrying blocks of heavy stone for the building of the crematorium wall. The work was partly overseen by vicious ex-criminal Bloody Krot who came to single out Kolbe for particularly brutal treatment. Witnesses say Kolbe accepted his mistreatment and blows with surprising calm. Despite the awful conditions of Auschwitz, people report that Kolbe retained a deep faith and dignity in the face of appalling treatment. On June 15th, he 
was even able to send a letter to his mother. Dear Mama, at the end of this month of May, I was transferred to the camp of Auschwitz. Everything is well in my regard. Be tranquil about me and my health, because the good God is everywhere and provides for everything with love. On occasion, Krat made Kolbe carry the heaviest planks until he collapsed. He then beat Kolbe savagely, leaving him for dead in the mud. Fellow prisoners secretly moved him to the camp prison, where he was able to recover. Prisoners also report that he remained selfless, often sharing his meager rations with others. In July 1941, three prisoners appeared to have escaped from the camp. As a result, the deputy commander of Auschwitz ordered 10 men to be chosen to be starved to death in an underground bunker. When one of the men selected, Franciszek Gajovnicek cried out, My wife, my children. At this point, Kolbe volunteered to take his place. The Nazi commander replied, What does this Polish pig want? Father Kolbe pointed his hand to the condemned man and repeated, I am a Catholic priest from Poland. I would like to take his place because he has a wife and children. Rather surprised, the commander accepted Kolbe in the place of Gajewnicek. He later said, I could only thank him with my eyes. I was stunned, could hardly grasp what was going on. The immensity of it, I am to live and someone else willingly and voluntarily offers his life for me. Stranger, is this some dream? I was put back into my place without having had the time to say thank you to Maximilian Kolbe. I was saved and I owe to him the fact that I could tell you all of this. The news quickly spread all around the camp. It was the first and the last time that such an incident happened in the whole history of Auschwitz. Franciszek Gajovnicek would miraculously survive Auschwitz and would later be present at Kolbe's canonization in 1971. The men were led away to the underground bunker where they were to be starved to death. It is said that in the bunker, Kolbe would lead the men in prayer and singing hymns. When the guards checked the cell, Kolbe could be seen praying in the middle. Bruno Borgowitz, a Polish prisoner who was charged with serving the prisoners, later gave a report of what he saw. The 10 condemned to death went through terrible days. From the underground cell in which they were shut up, they continually arose with the echo of prayers. The men in charge of emptying the buckets of urine found them always empty. Thirst drove the prisoners to drink the contents. Since they had grown very weak, prayers were now only whispered. At every inspection, when almost all the others were now lying on the floor, Father Kolbe could be seen kneeling or standing in the center, looking cheerfully into the face of SS men. Father Kolbe never asked for anything, and he did not complain. Rather, he encouraged the others, saying that the fugitive might be found, and then they would all be freed. One of the SS guards remarked, this priest is really a great man. We have never seen anyone like him. After two weeks, nearly all the prisoners, except Kolbe, had died due to dehydration and starvation. Because the guards wanted to sell empty, the remaining prisoners in Kolbe were executed with a lethal injection on August 14th. Those present say he calmly accepted death, lifting his arm. The deed and courage of Maximilian Kolbe spread around the Auschwitz prisoners, offering a rare glimpse of light and human dignity in the face of extreme cruelty. After the war, his reputation grew, and he became symbolic of courageous dignity. St. Maximilian Kolbe is among 20 martyrs from across the globe who have been honored with a statue at the facade of Westminster Abbey. The priest who had no greater love than to lay down his life can be seen above the west door of the Abbey, along with Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Martin Luther King Jr., 17 others. Though spared the torture of the starvation bunker, Gajovnicek, the prisoner Kobe died for, still suffered greatly. He was in Auschwitz for over five years, and his sons did not live to see the day of his release. Saint Maximilian is a patron saint of families, prisoners, journalists, political prisoners, drug addicts, and the pro-life movement. Saint John Paul II declared him to be the patron saint of our difficult century. The evils which made the 20th century so difficult were not left behind as we moved into the 21st century. Kolbe, as many Poles, sacrificed their lives for others in the Nazi German reign of terror. It is estimated that one million Poles assisted Jews. Tens of thousands died trying to save Jews. Unlike Kolbe, many names will never be known because they died alongside the Jews. Christian charity and martyrdom is a true act of love for others and Poland as a nation suffered for practicing this doctrine.